Hi, it's James from Hidden Depth Coaching. Um, my Monday clip today, well, I done a clip last week that got shared and viewed and received loads of comments and loads of messages. So I thought I would obviously follow on to that a wee bit because, you know, it's a, it's a very, very important thing. And it, it was obviously on the back of how, uh, you know, how young men feel like they, they can't talk to people because it could be perceived in their own mind as being weak. And you know, what was great to see was the amount of people that were sharing it, commenting on it, and actually just put out there that you know, that they actually have felt kind of similar. So what I thought I would do is, I believe that, I work, I work with things like a laws of attraction, right? And you've got a problem and you've got a solution, right? And the, the solution is never in the same energy as the problem, right? You're never ever going to find the solution while you keep focusing on the problem. And I also mention a lot in my coaching about your mind being a garden and pulling out these weeds. And, you know, if you were cleaning out your garden, right, if you were pulling out weeds in your garden, you wouldn't pull the weed out and judge it for being there in the first place, would you? You, you wouldn't question why the weed was there. You would just realise that it's a weed and it needs to go because it's holding you back. So... The biggest thing that's really holding everybody back just now is this judgment that they, they're there in the first place. And I'll be honest with you, you know, who do we think we are that we're going to get through life without getting ourselves in this place? Let's let's just look at when we're born. We're born getting to five, right? So I don't know about you, but all of this didn't come with a manual. It didn't come with an operating system of how it worked. And then we're trying to copy off of people that didn't know how to work for themselves. So. Basically, you know, we never really had a start and how all this was meant to work. So it's not as if we had this, like, oh, by the way, this is how your mind, your body and your emotions work, just so that you know you're going to come up against all this stuff. So nobody had that, right? So basically we're dumped here without a user manual and how we're meant to, how, how we're meant to operate and how we're meant to feel and what we're meant to do. So I, I've kind of generalised it and you see if this kind of resonates with you. So... Between 5 and 13 is kind of, you know, working stuff out years for me. And I call 13 my ball, my rules. Because I think that was when you had this bit where, you know, my ball, my rules. You know, you would pick the ball up and take it home because people weren't conforming to how you wanted it to be. And I, I, think, I think that's pretty true. I think most days, unless something really dramatic happened, most of our childhoods up to about 13, you were kind of starting to develop and own the personality that was you. And then between 13 and 16, was, you know, it all became about measuring up, grades, trying to fit in. And then, you know, I don't know about you, but when I left school just before I turned 16, I actually thought at that age, like, that's me, I'm going to go and work now, I'm a man. You know, I, I've got this stuff together where... It could not have been further for the truth. You look so far away from knowing what's going on is unbelievable. And then you've got often a tough five years between, you know, between 16 and uh, uh, 21. But what I, what, what I feel personally is this is when the real unhappiness starts to appear. You know, it's a lot earlier than what you think. You know, I think it's really... I think it's really between that ages of like 14, 15, right, to about right to about 21, but once you hit around about that age, you start to change, and this is where the addictions come in, because you're not facing this unhappiness that you've got, so you start trying to get addicted to things, where, you know, some people might land on a good addiction, whether it be a sport, or, you know, that, that can take them somewhere really well, but a lot of people land on a bad addiction, where at times it temporarily makes you feel good or temporarily makes you feel a bit better. But then what happens is the addictions need to keep growing. So I would say the right tough years, especially for guys, is round about between 25 and 34. That's when it gets really, really tough and it can get really dark at times. And then the darker it gets, the more you'll go to some sort of addiction to try and escape the darkness that's going on in your own mind. Uh, and that's what I said last week, it's about the box, but eventually the box led to open up and then all over spills. But we've not been used to talking about this. 
And the first step is, that's why, you know, that's why that clip was there last week. The first step is actually to say this out loud, that I don't get what's going on inside my head. I don't get how I'm feeling. I don't get what I'm meant to do here. And I'm telling you, if you're at that bit, you're actually at stage one. You're actually doing a lot better than the people that are kidding on that everything's okay. Right? But what we forget, like, say, for instance, we've took that right to somebody who's around about 33, 34, right? Well, say you live to your 90, right, or beyond. Look at the amount of years that's still, still got to go, right? But when you're at this bit, it's like you go through a change internally, right? And then you start to evaluate everything inside yourself. And you can't move forward because of all the stuff that's happened up to it. And it's really, when you look at it, it's really just been, it's really just been a brief chapter in your life. You've basically let go of control for a brief chapter and then you've brought in outside conditions to try and make you feel good. And I heard somebody else putting a clip up, somebody that was in a similar place and they were saying like, you know, why go to a life coach because that'd be hopeless because they're just going to tell you to think positive. And I'll be honest with you, you're not a very good fucking life coach if you're telling people to think positive when they've got something that needs to be handled. Positivity is never going to get you out of a problem. You've got to get that problem, have a look at it and work it out and then move forward. But what I would like to do is I would like to help you generalise that so that you can move forward and talk to you about what's holding you back, right? The first thing that's holding you back is feeling like you shouldn't be in the jam in the first place, feeling like this shouldn't have happened to you. The bottom line is you, if it's happening to you, if you're feeling this way, then you're already starting to question that you don't want to stay in this fucking hamster wheel of life where it's just another addiction after another addiction after another addiction just to try and make yourself feel good. Like, <clears throat> if I take something, if I drink something, if I buy something, <clears throat> I'm going to feel better. So you've actually got off, got off the hamster wheel of life. And that's how, you know, if I look back over the last 10 years, 10 years ago was when I didn't want to be here anymore. So, you know, it's actually been the best moment in my life because that's when the ripple effect started to change and now I'm 10 years down the line and doing this type of work and, and you know, loving what I'm, what I'm doing. But I want you to clean up that dirty bit quicker than what I did. Because here's what I did, right? I used to think, I'd done all the positive thinking, <clears throat> went to all the seminars and I created this image of who I wanted to be. Like, this is the guy that I wanted to be. And I had so much disgust towards the person that I used to be. And it was a date with destiny with Tony Robbins that he kind of pulled that together and he realised that if it wasn't for the person that I was, I wouldn't be on these courses and I wouldn't be doing the things that I'm going to do. So I had to actually kind of bring in that person that I used to be, right? And I'm going to try and help you do that quicker than what I've done it, right? Because as I said, when you go to your garden, you pull out weeds, you wouldn't judge why the weed was there, you would just pull the fucking weed out, right? And this is what I want you to look at. I want you to look at for key things in your life, right? First of all, being truthful with you. Life has been a bad, bad block that you've ignored. That's all it is. It's been a bad bit of your life that you've ignored. Now what's happening to you is you're looking at your life and you're evaluating everything, you're beating up yourself. That's not going to help you for the next 60 or 70 years doing that, right? So what I would like you to do is I would like you to look at this bad period in your life and the first thing you've got to do is say it, right? This is a shit period, but I want to sort this, right? Then I want you to look for things that you're saying that you're regretting, you're feeling disappointed about, you're guilty about, you're blaming, or even feeling misery or shame, right? You've got to identify these things, right? And you've got to be okay with them, right? Because trying to discard them, try to kid on them no there, Try just be okay with them, right? Because this is the first stage. If you can appreciate the good and the bad in your life, because it strikes a balance after time. So if you can appreciate the good and the bad that's happened up until now, right? And be okay with it. Be okay that you messed up. Because whatever, you're, on the next 60 or 70 years that you've still got to go, right? If you're around about 30, right? You can do so many amazing things. I mean, but you're never going to do them if you're carrying the old guilt, regrets, disappointments and miseries and shames of your past. We have all fucked up in our life. Everybody's fucked up in their life. But if you keep carrying those, that old stuff about you, then you're never ever going to feel better. You're never going to feel inspired to go and do anything new. So what I would ask you to do for just one week, right? And I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this through these stages. But for one week, let the pressure it. 
be, say to yourself, I'm okay with all the things that you've done. Like, even if you've done things that are really bad that you feel that are, you're never going to fix them looking back. That's why regret and grief are the same energy. Because when you grieve somebody, you can never bring them back. When you regret something, you can never ever change it. But you can change the way you look at it. You can change as a person. You can decide to make different choices moving forward. But most people can't get to move forward because they're carrying the weight in their past. And this is not positive thinking. This is real talking. You, you're only going to create a better story moving forward. It's a fucking story. Life is a story. And you had a bad bit. You get caught out with addictions. You get caught out with you know trusting the wrong people. I don't know many people in life that don't get caught out. And that's what I'm saying. With most young men, we all hit this slump this low part and some of you fight through it with addictions or bring in certain things or, you know, we'll feel good if our football team's doing great or whatever, we'll, we'll bring something in to try and make us feel good, which is outside us, rather than finding inside what we really want to do. And this is what I would challenge you to do. I would challenge you to just take to this bit and say, right, okay, I'm going to look back in my life. I'm going to look at all the things that I'm avoiding. I'm going to bring them out. I'm going to bring them to the surface. I'm going to bring my regrets, my disappointments, I might feel like shit doing this. I'm going to bring up all my guilts, my blames and my shames. And I'm going to be alright with it. Because you know what, I can't change it. But if I'm okay with it, then I can say to myself, right, you've not got this content, what I had, it was like this running away from somebody who you used to be. And this image of who you wanted to be. You're never going to get to be the person that you want to be while you're fucking trying to ignore the person you used to be. That's part of who you are. And what you want to do is bring them all into, all into alignment. And I've got another wee thing for you is, you, it's like what gets people all the time, right? They do well for like four or five days and then they mess up again and then they think, oh, well, that's it. You're not meant to get it right the first time. And what you want to do is go a week and then you want to go maybe 21 days, which is really starting to work new habits. And then you might go three months and then fuck up one time. But you handle that one time, you don't need to bring back all the other years of crap. Again, that's the stuff that you need to say, right, I need to be okay with that now, because unless I'm okay with that, I'm never ever going to feel better about moving forward. I am never going to feel better unless I'm okay with what's happened. I don't want you to be proud of it. I don't want you to walk about fucking showing off it. But you've got to be okay with it and say, but I want to change moving forward. But listen, this is an add-on to this. Hope... I'm trying to do as much as I can because, you know, people are asking me about one-to-one -one coaching. I've not got any slots. I can't, I can't get MDLs in. I've got a full client base now. But I do have seminars, you know, and the next one, that's a one-day one, is the 22nd of April. Find out how this works because that's what I'm saying. You know, 10 years ago, I know where I, where I was and I know where I am now. And all that's happened is I've learned these skills to be able to look at things differently. And when you're okay with it, and that's what I'm saying, don't be proud of it, but be okay with it and say, right, I need to take responsibility for this. This is me. I don't put and beat myself up and feeling sorry for myself for what I've done. I'm never going to fix anything back the way. I'm only going to fix things forward. So, guys, it's and this is aimed at guys, if you're in that dark bit, that damaging bit between 24 to, you know, 34, as it's all these external, like, like addictions that are the ones that are going to eventually say, you know what, that, this stuff doesn't fit. And you're going to be looking at other people thinking they've got it all together, and they're probably not. Some people hit this low point and then, I don't know, maybe get a new job, become a dad, or something happens that just flicks them out of it, and then, you know, they get distracted enough that they can just let things go. But, uh, listen, this is quite a long message today, but I thought it was quite important after, you know, what was said after the message last week, because it was just a brief bit of honesty, you know, we are going to hit this bit, but there is stuff that we can do, and it's not about being positive, it's about being fucking truthful, and the truth is, no matter what you regret, you can't change it, so you better be okay with it, and then change moving forward, and if you can appreciate the good and the bad, maybe this has been a bad bit, but it will strike a balance, I think that's what life does at times, you know, I think you have a bad bit, but the reason you don't get the good bit is because you just keep homing into the bad bit all the time, and that's what I'm saying, the problem and the solution are in a completely different fucking energy, so if you keep focusing on the problem, you ain't going to get 
any solutions, you've got to be okay with it. And then you'll get realizations, you'll get direction, you'll get choice, you'll decide that you want to do different things. But anyway, listen, if you want to go to the seminar, it's a uh, 22nd of April, and there'll be loads of this stuff, and I'll help you clear out as many weeds as you can to move forward. And I've got like two days and five days workshops, but I'm getting people asking about one-to-one -one coaching, but I've not got any of that just now. And you can get details of the seminar at www.hiddendepthscoaching.com. All right, listen, have a great week. Cheers.